So today we are going to be creating this product. We're going to model it, we're going to texture it, we're going to light it, and that will be it. So let's get started straight away. Right here I have an empty scene and there's a cube and a light and I will press X to delete it. Then I will go to the image reference and bring in the reference image, which you can get for free on Patreon. It's this image and yes, there's a bunch of other stuff as well because I got it from a website, Aldar. RZ90, RY90, and then I'm going to scale this up until it's approximately the size of the default cube, which I will bring back right now. And the reason why I'm bringing it to the size of the default cube is so that every setting that we will be using is going to be the same for all of us. So this is the approximation that I think will work out fine. Now, I'm going to delete this default cube. Then I will bring in a plane, a plane, and I will bring this backwards. Now that we've got this plane, we actually need to make sure that this shape is following the pattern. So on the sides it is flat, but right here on the front there is a slight angle. And we want to replicate that. I'm going to add some loop cuts right here and make sure that they are uneven, because then we have a middle line. I'm going to press on 1, and then I will select O for proportional editing. And right here we can set it to sphere, because we want it to be spherical instead of smooth. So I will select this vertex, G and X, and let's bring it outwards. Make sure that our scale is big enough. Something like this. Shouldn't be too extreme, but it also shouldn't be underwhelming. So I'm going to place a loop cut right here. Turn off proportional editing, SX0, and now it is straight. I will select all of this because we don't need it anymore. And then I will go to the modifiers, add a mirror modifier. And now it is too far. So I'm going to bring this G and X, make sure clipping is turned on, and now it won't be able to move past this middle line. This is a bit too wide, so I'm going to press S and X and actually scale this down just a little bit, like so. I think this is correct for the bottle that we are making. Now, I'm going to make sure that all of this is exactly in the middle, apply the mirror modifier, and now if we move this around, it should be connected. Press X, dissolve edges, because we don't need it anymore. I'm going to select everything, click on tree in order to move into this view, and then I will press E and it will move upwards automatically. I'm going to bring it all the way over here. Then I will press E once again, scale it inwards. Then I will add a loop cut right here with Control R and scale it outwards. And now we should have a bottle that looks like this. Now we're going to add some loop cuts right here as well and make sure that we get squares, squares that look like this. I'm going to select all of this in the middle, press I just a little bit, and I will press E to bring it down. G and C until it's somewhere over here. We can click on tree and make sure that it's approximately the same over here as well. So it's going over here because we're going to drag it outwards later on. I'm going to scale this inwards and now we'll click on control plus. We have this area selected so I will press control I to select everything else and hide it. Now it's hidden. I'm going to select this middle edge right here, this one in the middle. I will turn on proportional editing once again, click on 3, G and C, and make sure that it looks like the reference, just a little bit, something like this. I'm going to press on Alt-C, and I'm going to add a loop cut right here, and scale it inwards. It should have a non-uniform type of texture, so something like this as well. I will select the inner area, and scale this down as well. We can add another loop cut right here, press O to make it go more inside, select this and have it go inside even more. Press Alt H and now the model looks like this. I'm going to press Ctrl I once again and now we have the inner area selected. I'll click on Ctrl plus because I want a little bit more but I don't want this area so I'm going to deselect it by holding Alt. I'm going to press Shift D, P, separate the selection and now we have a selection for this inner area. I will make sure to select this inner line and search for grid fill. This will fill up the grid and now it looks like this. From here on out we have two options. We can either move along with this or we can simply destroy it by clicking on faces and deleting all of that. Then go over here, type grid fill. Now we have some more grids to work with. What I'm going to do is press I, move it inwards just a little bit. Press E to move it upwards. Press I to move it inwards and E to move it upwards. I believe this is correct for this object. I'm going to click on 7 and I will make sure that we have this entire middle area. Click on loop tools, circle, and it's messing it up. So we should go here, 
apply the scale by pressing Ctrl A. So the first thing we're going to do is press I, loop tools, circle, let's scale it down. And we should probably rotate it as well to make sure it's a bit more straight. Something like this. Press E. And uh, I'm not sure how this part looks. What you could do is delete the inner faces, select this, press I, move it upwards once more. And in this fashion, we will have this type of bottle. On this part, there's going to be a very large bottle cap. So it's not going to be bothering us in any fashion. Now onto the bottom. I'm going to select all of this, holding control. I will press on three to see what we're doing. GNC, let's bring it upwards just a little bit. And I want to emulate this area right here. So I'm going to press E, I'm going to scale it inwards, E, scale it inwards, and E to make it a bit more flat right there at the bottom. Then I'm going to press I and bring it inwards quite a bit, something like this. Press E to move it upwards. And I'm going to do that one more time because I find that it gives a bit more detail in the glass. So e and bring it upwards just a little bit. All right. So now we're going to add a subdivision surface modifier, control three. And this is what it looks like right now. We have a slight edge right here. We have our flat edges on the side and we can always change this by adding more geometry, for example. We are not going to do that right now. We're just going to work with it the way it is. Let's go over here. Let's select this line, this line and this line and press shift E in order to make it a lot stronger. We can also select the top part and press I. Now for the top, what I'm going to do is select this entire object, Shift D, let's bring it upwards, somewhere over there. But now I will make two loop cuts right over there. And I will select the top part like this. Let's make sure we have everything. And I will also select the bottom part. Hold Shift. And now we have this. So let's delete those faces. This inner area is loose, so I'm going to press L inside of it and delete those faces as well. Now, what I want to do is take this part and that part, turn on proportional editing, S and X, and make it a little bit more extreme. Make sure to also get the bottom vertices. Something like this. And that makes it slightly more rounded off. I think this fits better with the model if we, if we look at the lighting right here. So I'm going to click on three, G and Z. Let's bring it over here and make sure it aligns. Then let's take the entire upper area like so, G and C, and let's make sure that it's going all the way to the top. Let's select the bottom and add a grid fill. Let's select the top and add a grid fill. Then we'll add two loop cuts, S and Z without the personal editing and make sure that it's a lot stronger. Now, I think this is a bit too much. So I'm going to select both these angles, S and X with proportional editing, and let's bring it back in just a little bit. That's basically it for the model, but we can really tell as soon as we added the lighting and the glass. So let's first add an HDRI. Let's go into render view after setting it to cycles. And now we've got some lighting in here. I'm not going to take a light that has specific colors like blue. So I'm going to take Quattro Quanti, and I find that it makes things pretty white and normally lit. So I will select the bottom part right here and I will make sure that it's glass. So add a new material, open the shader tab, go to the shader editor. Let's delete the principal BSDF, shift A, glass BSDF. BSDF into the surface. And actually the settings are perfect because it has an IOR of 1.5, which is the IOR for glass. And that means that our work here is done. We can always play around with the roughness just a little bit. I like giving it a slight bit of roughness, but not too much. Then I'm going to enter into the inside. And what you might think is that we're just simply going to change this color. However, there's a very big problem. Let me make this a slightly lighter color. As you can see, when we look at this through the glass, it is actually pretty dark. While if we bring it outwards, it's way lighter. You can see the difference like so. Now, this of course is a problem. So how are we going to fix that? First of all, I see that we've forgotten to give a modifier to this. So let's press Control 3 and now we can see it is entering to our other mesh. So I'll go into edit mode, press all for A and Alt S and slightly scale it inwards until we actually see some of the glass. We can always make changes. 
by bringing it downwards by ourselves using Alt C for example. And now it is fitting entirely inside of that glass. So how are we going to solve this dreadful situation? Because this definitely isn't the color that's being portrayed right here. Now the solution is quite simple actually. We're going to open the emission, we're going to increase the strength and we're going to make sure that it has that same type of color. In order to see things a little bit better, I'm going to add a plane, scale it upwards, remove this for now, and then select the plane, bring it upwards here as well, E and Z, select this, Control B, and shade it smooth. And this is what our bottle now looks like. Already starting to look pretty cool, but there is a slight problem. For this specific area, this glass, we would like to have a solidify. So I'm going to add the solidify modifier. Now, we need to play around with this in order to get it to look right. So if we bring it outwards, it's actually going inwards. But if we bring it towards the negative values, it's going outwards. I like bringing mine a little bit inwards. And as you can see, this gives an extra layer to the glass. So let's make sure that it's really subtle and not too much. So now we have a glass that looks a bit more glassy. It has this double layer. Now this might also mean that this is now going through the mesh. If that is the case, we can simply scale it down and make some deformations in whatever fashion is necessary. I think in this case, we are fine. Now for the bottom material, I'm going to the base color and I will give it a hex value of FFE0CCFF. Then we've got this. I'm going to decrease the roughness just a little bit, but we also need a coat. So I'm going to increase the weight and that will make it very shiny as we can see right over here. So I will improve the roughness by increasing that just a little bit. So the lighting reflections look more like this. Of course, we have to change the color of this as well. I'm going to change the tint with the hex code of FFF2CAFF. And this will make it a bit more creamy. Let me add a light real quick, just a point light, for example. So I find that this is a bit too shiny. I will increase the roughness until I'm happy with the result. Now, we need to add some more. So let's go over to this object right here. Shift S, cursor to select it. This will place it in the middle, add an image, mesh plane, and select the texture. We've got it right here. It says forever Dior. I'm going to make sure that we can see the empty once again. And place this at the exact location where it should be placed. And then I will split it in the middle. Select this bottom part, separate the selection, and bring the Dior over there and slightly bigger as well. Something like this. Now, I'm going to select this, give it a subdivision right here as well. Same goes for this one. Let's add some geometry. Go over to the modifier stack, shrink wrap modifier, and select the original glass. This should place it on the glass. I'm going to do the same for this one, shrink wrap, select the glass. Now, what you might notice is that these textures are not very visible anymore. One way to fix that is actually to open this, then go over to the emission, plug the texture into the emission and increase the value. And now it becomes a lot wider, which means that we can also read it. And that's just a simple hack to get this fixed. Now, of course, it's not as white as the original image. I'm going to click on three, by the way, and control alt zero. This will place a camera, which I will set to 80 millimeters. I will zoom this out, make sure it's in the middle. And if you really want the image to be flat, you can set perspective to orthographic and then play around with the orthographic skill. And this will make the image entirely flat. We are not going to do that right now. I'm simply going to use perspective. Now there's two ways in order to get this really wide background. We can add a new material to our back plane, go to emission and change the strength of this. But this will also emit light and that can be bothersome. Uh, it doesn't really matter that much. It still looks pretty good. That's not what I'm going to do. I'm going into this material, make it a bit more white, and I will simply add a area light and make it ridiculously strong, such as 10,000, and shine it at the back plane. We can do the same right over here to remove any shadow that it has. Of course, this might be a bit too much, so I'm going to select both of these lights, place them into the plane lighting collection by pressing M. Then go to light blinking. We've got our target object right here, which is the plane. And I will select the collection plane lighting. Then I will add the light blinking. And as you can see, it doesn't work on this anymore. You can especially see it if we split it around. So now it's only working on this bottle. 
and now it's only working on this plane. Of course, the plane is still emitting light on our true glossy reflections. If you don't want that, you can select the plane, then go to the Object Properties tab, open the Visibility, and click on Diffuse. And now it will remove any diffuse layers. You can click on Glossy to remove any glossiness. You can click on Transmission, but I wouldn't recommend it. And you can remove the shadow if you would like to do that. This is just something that you can do. Now, if you want to render this out with this white image, but you don't like the fact that there's a strike right here, like a black type of strike, you want it to be completely white, what you can do is go over here and turn the plane off in the camera, make sure that the HDRI is transparent right here. And now you can render it and place it on a white background in Photoshop, DaVinci Resolve, or your editing software of choice. So that's the way that you get a perfect white looking model. Now. I'm going to leave it on for now. I just want to see what it looks like like this. We'll go into the camera, view per display, passepartout. Click on the composition guides, center, and make sure that it's completely centered. Like so. Now, if you want to make any adjustments, now is the time to do that. And otherwise we can start lighting this. So let's delete the point light. Let's go to light, area light, RX minus 90, RZ 180. Let's scale it up a bit and let's rotate it RC45 GCC and now it's aimed at the product with a 45 degree angle. Let's increase the light power on this and we can also decrease the spread if we'd like to do that. R and Z, let's move it around until we get something that looks pretty cool. Something like this and we can also do it from the other side naturally. I'm going to bring it over there, R and Z and make sure that we get this cool lighting streak on the side. We can also make some sharper edges if we'd like to do that. So select this entire area, for example, and press uh, Shift E, and that will make it a whole lot sharper. We can do the same for this object, for example, something like this. And now we have a finished product. We modeled it, we textured it, we gave it some lighting, and it looks like this. So in the next part, we are going to be making this render. So I hope you're as excited as I am. Subscribe and click right here to watch that video next.